Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and this is a slightly different video, as evidenced by me holding my vlog camera, where it feels a bit more homely. I like, I like vlog camera videos. I should do them more often, but I have to have an excuse, and honestly, my studio space, not the best for, uh, cramped videos. Well, I mean, not the best for videos on my vlog camera, because my studio space is cramped. We're, we're getting ahead of ourselves. This video is a slightly embarrassing video, but I, I thought it would be an interesting one to do. And so here we are. This is a video of all the games that I have been sent for review, sent to review, that I have not yet reviewed. It's a slightly embarrassing video, like I said already. It's around 100 or so games, somewhere in that range. Uh, make no mistake, I review a lot of games. We'll go over these case by case and bit by bit, but a lot of times I get sent games to review that I didn't ask for, and those that generally get deprioritized. My interest level is a little lower, my sense of obligation is a little lower. Other times I ask for them at some point, whether a month ago or a year plus ago, had the best of intentions, and still haven't gotten to it. And we'll talk about that throughout this video. Also, this is a good time to say, if you are a publisher watching this video and any of your games are in here, I apologize genuinely. We'll talk more about my balancing of what I do, don't do, what I try to learn from all those things. But there are, there are missteps that I've made by the very nature of some of the things in this video. I'll also say that if you're a publisher and you think that there's anything here that you're supposed to get a review for that you don't see in this video, there's a few opportunities, there's a few options there. Uh, one is you missed it and it's in some sort of roundup review or something else, or alternatively it's been filmed already, but you know, hasn't gone live yet. In general, some of the things you see today in this video are gonna be things that already got reviews for however many days or weeks ago because I don't know when this video goes up, so some things will already have been done. But this is me going over all 100-ish games that I have an overdue review for and talking through them one at a time. I'll go through, let's, let's go ahead and show you the table for a bit and show you what we're talking about over here. We have all these games over here. We have these games as well. All these games on the table over here. We have the stack of games on the chair behind me over here. And then I don't know how well you'll see it, but across there, we have a stack of games on that table that we'll also go ahead over and find out more about soon. I'm going to go through all of these. This video, by its very nature, may have some cuts in it. Usually this video, usually my videos don't have cuts because I just keep going, but I think for camera angle's sake and for the sake of possibly shelving things as I talk about them, which I might actually do for the first batch over here, and for the sake of shelving things as I talk about them, I think there inherently will be some cuts as I adjust, set up a camera, do all that. My goal is to go through all of these, talk about why they're here, talk about what's next for them, and, and figure it out. Like I said already, there are some missteps inherently. If I say yes, if I, if I ask for or say yes to any game to review, the obligation is on me to cover it in, in some reasonable time frame. If I tell the publisher, hey, by the way, I can't guarantee a review, that's different. If I, in some way, if I in some way convey that I make no guarantees, then that's on them and not on me. But me very often I, I have the best of intentions and I get, again, I do a lot of reviews. I have something like, I don't know, 800, 900 reviews on the channel, some large number of reviews. It just inherently, some things pile up. And many of these games are recent. Many are also not. I'd say about half of the 100 or so games are recent enough that I don't consider myself late yet. There's just a natural turnaround time to reviewing things. The practical reality is every game I review, I want to give multiple plays for. Very many of these games are games I've already played, but I need to play more. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Let's start off and do I, I, Maybe I'll go ahead and I'll set up a camera. So um, I'll see you in a sec. All right, we're gonna start off with some basic 12 by 12 boxes because I think this job will become a lot easier if I actually, you know, shelf things as I go. And so these are a lot of my review area shelves where I keep things so they look a little emptier. But let's start with a recent one, The Last Kingdom from uh, Gamelin Games. This one's actually a slightly awkward one. Uh, this is The Last Kingdom. I've talked about this game on Kickstarter in the past and I have an interest in the game. I've heard from people who played it that they enjoyed it and therefore I'm interested in playing it. And it's an area control, it's my genre. I want to table it. I think it plays well at three players, which means it should be easy enough to table. We'll come back to that. But The Last Kingdom, the only part that's awkward is I filmed a video where I was talking about 10 things not to do on Kickstarters and one, or not 10 things not to do, 10 marketing tricks in Kickstarters. And one of those was talking about price points and how you know, you're just like, oh, you're saving money even when you're not. And I specifically used The Last Kingdom as an example. I filmed that video. The next day, uh, they reached out to me and said, hey, would you like to review The Last Kingdom? And I was like, I actually would, but I had a video going up like two days later where I was gonna criticize their Kickstarter handling of the game. Not necessarily them so much as a, the general practice, but they were the example I used. I felt a little awkward about it. I still feel a little awkward about it. Again, if you're from Gambling Games and you're watching this, apologies for the timing of that. Uh, I, I filmed the thing first, then got the thing, and then just felt bad and didn't really know how to say, yes, I'd love to review it. Also, heads up, sorry, but I'm going to criticize you a bit tomorrow in a video. 
So sorry about that, but I am interested in The Last Kingdom. We'll go ahead and put this on the shelf over here. Uh, see if these. This, I actually have the rule book pulled out, ready to read. This is, again, both these are recent. Last Kingdom is very recent. Sea of Thieves is also very recent. Just got this one after Gen Con had arrived from uh, Steamforge Games. I've already played this one, but like I said, I like to play things more than once. So I have the rule book read. I have the rule book out to refresh myself on it. My first play was with the Steamforge team, which meant they were able to run the game. So I know how to play the game, but there's a difference between knowing how to play a game versus being able to help others when they get stuck, or even help yourself when you get stuck. So... I need to go ahead and finish the rule book and then play it again, and you know, I hope to review that one soon. We have Ex Libris, which we'll come back to when we get to the base game. We have Virtue. Now, this is going to be one of very, of um, a lot of common mistakes I've made, which we're going to talk about. And the two most common mistakes I make are saying yes to heavy Euro games and yes to games that are best with four or more players without fully thinking through my actual availability and schedule to play those games. My interest, my interest is there. I don't say yes to things. We'll talk about the things I didn't say yes to, that's present as well, but my, I don't say yes to something unless I'm interested in actually covering it. But this is a Euro game that's better at higher player counts, and that means that it falls into the trap of my interest level is present, but my actual ability to table those as fast as they're coming in isn't, which means I have to slow down how fast they come in, or tell the publisher, happy to review it, I cannot guarantee timeline. Again, if I tell a publisher I cannot guarantee timeline, at that point, it's off of me, it's on them, their choice to make. I didn't do that with Virtue. I said, yes, I'd love to review it. I started reading the rules, and then other games got caught up. It's a heavier Euro game. It plays best at higher player counts. I just have too many that fall into that category. Like, uh, one-player games, I can knock out easily. Two-player games, I can knock out incredibly easily. Three-player games, I can still knock out pretty quickly. They slow down a drop. The practical reality of reviewing games is I want to play them multiple times and the problem in order to review them. But I have to sign up the people in my life to do that, which is a different conversation. So I have to sign up friends, family, you know, people I work with to play those games, which just makes it harder to table them as frequently or as fast as I would like. Speaking of which, we have Brazil. This was on the docket to be played last November. I read the rules. Uh, Devin read the rules. We were going to play it. Me, Devin, and Meg were going to play it. It didn't happen. I'm hoping to play it with a local local friend who's been on, the ca he's been on camera on the, the show before, Max. Hoping to play that then. But, uh... I want to play this one. I heard good things. I was very interested in this one. Uh, apologies to Portal Games. This is like a year overdue. Virtue's like maybe six months. The other two are new. To me, I consider anything under three months not even remotely late, uh, unless there's a specific timeline attached to it that changes the conversation. Once you go from three to six, it's like a normal time frame, not necessarily early, not necessarily in time, pushing it. Post six months is where I start to consider things late. And again, I'd say about half of these are in that range. Darwin's Journey should not be here. I backed this. I don't owe anyone any coverage. I have no idea why it's on that shelf. We're going to move that. Rival Restaurants. I said yes to this from Gap Closer Games. They've done Illiterati. I think Illiterati is fantastic. This one plays better at higher player counts. And I've read the rules. I actually know how to play this game. But very often you'll find a common trend is but half of these games I've read the rules. But if I read the rules long enough ago, I'm going to have to reread them, which is the case with uh, Rival Restaurants. So hope to table this one. It's a lighter game, a little easier to table. But... Easier to table is not the same thing as easy to table, unfortunately. We're going to start putting this in the next cubby over, shoving that down. Circadian's Chaos Order. See what I said about games that play better at higher player counts and a little heavier. This is actually a game I was supposed to play online with their team. Uh, that never happened, unfortunately. We were trying to schedule it. It never happened. They sent this a while back. I feel bad about this one. This is one of those that I meant well. Wanted to table it. As you can see, it's in shrink. Haven't even read the rules for this one. I have found. Some of these games are going to be games that you might see reviews for in a year or so. I don't know exactly when, but they are all games that I do plan on covering at some point. I had an interest in the game. I feel bad. Part of the reason, like, I wanted this video as well is for some of those games that are older, at least I'm talking about them in some way, shape, or form. It does not in any way take away from my obligations to the company, but, like, some of these I don't know when they're going to get covered, and I... We'll talk more about it. Holotype. This one's new enough that I'm not considering this one late yet. yet. This is from, um... I want to say Origins, uh, Origins when I picked this one up, and so it's still fairly new, still planning tabling this one. I know Chris George from Room and Board has said nothing but good things about this one. That's the main reason I picked it up. Speaking frankly, the art, uh, the art does not pull me in on the game itself. I'm more here because Chris George was here, and, uh, well, Chris George is always, always here. We have Atlantis Rising Monstrosities. Gen Con pickup. This should be an easy one to table. I can table this one well at solo, at two player, easily. It's an expansion as well, so I already know the base game. I just, you know, haven't prioritized it currently, but it is on my list of things to get to 
you know, soon enough. Uh, again, I don't know how soon soon enough is, but somewhere in that three to six month range, you can probably expect to see it. Part of the tricky part, as always, is every day games show up. Not necessarily every every day, but on a regular basis, games show up, which means I'm always trying to balance the obligations I currently have with the older things, and every day I film a little bit of both. I cover and play games that are a little older, and I cover and play games that are showing up that day. That's why you'll frequently see things covered on the channel that are games that just came out. And then you'll see frequently see reviews as well from a game that's like seven months ago. And sometimes you'll see a review that I filmed like four or five months ago. I may have even gotten rid of the game four or five months ago and you saw that on the channel. But just the review schedule only allows for so many reviews to go up a week. And so I have to balance those, you know, just everything. Crescent Moon from Osprey Games. Another one that I had good intentions for. I actually read the rules to this maybe six, seven months ago. Uh, but I didn't get to table it. I'm going to have to reread the rules to actually table it. Again, it operates a little better, higher player counts. It's a heavier Euro game or a midweight Euro game. Those are ones that I've gotten better. I've gotten better at either saying no, or at least, at the very least, letting my schedule be very clear to the people I'm saying yes to, yes or no to. Uh, let's see if this goes in here. Nope, that won't go in there. Give me a second while I try organizing this. Nope, that won't fit in there. So I guess you're gonna go, you know what, we're gonna go over there, over there. What's the rhyme reason for this? There is no rhyme reason, I'm just putting things on the shelf. Eternal Palace, Stephen Armani, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, Alley Cat Games. I I'm halfway through the rules in this one. I wanna play it. It should be simple enough to play. I think it needs at least three players to really shine, uh, and so I plan on playing it. It just uh, this one is didn't get tabled, and uh, that's another thing. Another thing I take into account, by the way, another thing worth mentioning is the balance of publishers that send me things. So, for example, Eternal Palace. All of these so far are games that I've said yes to. They are games that I may not have asked for them. In fact, I think like none of them I've asked for. None, 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 none of these games are games I've asked for, at least not yet. Sometimes I ask for games, I try to keep that to a minimum, and when I ask for a game, I feel much worse if I don't cover it, but I try to not ask for a lot of stuff. I try to, I say yes to things, and then sometimes things are just sent, or sometimes I'll say yes to one game, and three games will be sent, that happens as well. One thing I try to balance as well is coverage I'm giving for a publisher, meaning the fact that I put out a lot of reviews does not absolve me from my obligation to somebody, but I do feel better if that... <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. I do feel better if that publisher is someone who has sent me 10 games and I've reviewed seven of them and I have three kind of floating around. Because again, at the end of the day, reviews are free. I'm not charging for them. I'm giving you coverage and I'm putting in a lot of work relative to the coverage you're getting. But that doesn't mean, that still does not absolve me. That, that gives me the right to say, hey, I can't guarantee, send me the game. But if I don't say that, I still owe you coverage. But if it's a publisher who I've given a lot of coverage to, I feel better about the balance. So I often do try to make sure that when I'm overdoing things, I try to make sure that I'm balancing more games from publishers who I've given coverage to. So for example, 20th Century Games I've given coverage to, I'm not 20th Century, Alley Cat I've given coverage to, uh, Elf Creek I've given coverage to, Holotype's still new, I'm not worried with that. Circadian's Chaos Order I feel really badly about. Rival Restaurants I've given coverage to, Portal I've given coverage to, Super Meatball I've given coverage to, Steam Forge I've given coverage to, Gameland I've given a little coverage to, not a lot. I feel bad about that. I think they've sent me like three or four games. I've only actually covered like two, so I don't like the ratio there. But yeah, um, Osprey Games I've given coverage to, so I try to balance those things as well. Gnomes and Wizards. This is an upcoming uh, crowdfunding one that's a uh, paid preview coverage of this one. This should actually be played fairly shortly, so that has to be um, front and center. So we're going to make sure this... I don't want to put it there. We're going to put it on top of Rival Restaurants because it fits the box size. It's not front and center. I just lied to you. We have Dune War for Arrakis over here. This is from Gale Force 9. Uh, this is one I didn't ask for, uh, but I, I do... Gale Force 9 is a company I do feel badly about because they sent me a bunch of games and I've never given them a dedicated review. Now, granted, many of the games they've sent me are not games I've asked for, but I have expressed an interest in working with them in general, and so... And one game, one game I'm excited about, we'll talk about that soon. But I've given them review coverage, but in roundup reviews, not yet dedicated review coverage. Uh, I've actually read rules for several of their games that I'm prepped to play. They just haven't hit the table. Dune War for Arrakis is not one I asked for and not one I'm excited about, but it's one that I currently am holding on to. This is the kind of game that you may never see coverage on. If I didn't ask for a game, those are the only games that you might never see coverage on if I didn't ask for it. I still usually hold on to them to an extent. I want to see if I will get it played or not. I just, if you sent me something, I do want to try to cover it, but it's just not a guarantee. Uh, games like this, if I didn't cover a game like Dune War for Arrakis, if I just chose not to ever cover it, uh, you would not see coverage on it. You would not see it in games leaving the collection, because it's not technically leaving the collection. It was never really here. That only really applies to games I didn't ask for. That I have no... I have less of a sense of obligation. No, Well, no sense of obligation. I don't, when I didn't ask for a game, I don't have a sense of an obligation. What I do have is a sense of, hey, let me try it out. You sent it to me. Why not? Tesseract. Already played this one. Need to play a bit more. You can expect to see review coverage probably in the past, meaning this is one that probably has a review already out. 
Uh, let's let's put this front and center over here because I do want to. I want to go ahead and show it. So we're gonna go ahead and put it over here. Balancing all the games and how they fit is another conversation entirely. Okay, let's go ahead and continue grabbing some games. We got Kiwi Chow Down, which might actually fit up there. Kiwi Chow Down. Uh, never asked for this one. This is from from Draco Studios. I've covered a bunch of their games. I've put out reviews on their games. I like their games. Plan on playing this one. I pulled out the rule book at 1.2 actually table it, but just haven't done so yet. And um, I will do so at some point, but we'll find out. Eternal Palace can go over here, but it's not going to stay there. It's going to be pushed backwards. We'll talk more about that in a second. Okay, we are going to go ahead and grab Dog Park. Uh-oh, we have a missing piece over here from a game, which we are going to have to deal with soon. I know which game it is. It's Great Western Trail. Uh, Dog Park. This one just arrived. Uh, literally just arrived from, like, when you're watching this video, it showed up last week. So I actually pulled up the rulebook all ready to read it. I'm interested in playing it. We'll get to it at some point, but for right now, we're going to toss it up there and just put it prettily over there. Push it back just a notch. The games won't fall off the back end. Don't worry about that. We're going to move these boxes down. Again, we're trying to deal with standard size boxes, at least initially, so we can get those out of the way and just clear this table. Great Western Trail. We're going to have to open this up and put in that piece. We'll deal with organizing it later. Uh, this is from uh, Eggert Spiel, or 20th Century Games, I think, currently publishes this one. What is that? Gnomes and Wizards. We'll put this in over here. Anyways, um, that's a pamphlet covering stuff for Kickstarter coverage. Uh, Great Western Trail uh, from from Asmodee. I, Asmodee sends me a few things here and there. Great Western Trail is one of those things. I, this is Argentina specifically, which I've read the rules. I'm ready to go. Haven't tabled it yet. Uh, this is another one I feel badly about. It actually works well enough at two and three players. It should be tabled. It is more of a heavier Euro, so I need the right group for it. Uh, the group that I usually play those with, which is backlogged on, on a lot of games. Should get coverage of it soon enough, but soon enough is not today. We have Mr. Torque's Borderlands Arena of Badassery. I've actually played the prototype of this. This is new as well. This is from Gen Con, uh, but this is new. I played this. This is from um, Gearbox Monster Fight Club. It's from Monster Fight Club. I, I played the prototype of this at some point. Oh, did I play the prototype? Huh. Why do I feel like I played the prototype, but I'm not actually sure? Now I don't remember. Oh, maybe I played... I played it at a convention. That's what it was. That's what it was. I never got a prototype. I had a chance to demo this at a convention and just generally learn the flow and structure of the game. Uh, so I've, I've demoed it, not so much played it. I was trying to remember why. I was like, it feels familiar, but I don't remember actually covering it. But that's going to be one that I hope to cover soon at some point. But again, soon is relative. Jerusalem Anno Domini. This is one of two Devere games that I have not yet covered. Devere games, I usually turn around covers them pretty quickly. Again, slightly heavier Euro, and it just has it's gone through the rotation. I've prepped the rulebook. I'm halfway through the rules in this one. I'm going to get coverage on it at some point, but I am behind this one. This one and Batoku, which we'll talk about later, are two games I just haven't got to, unfortunately. That's uh, Jerusalem from, from, from Devere Games. Devere Games, I generally am a big fan of. I generally like their games. I think they do a good job. I'm usually a, I usually turn around coverage on their games. Like, I just played The White Cathedral. I have review coverage of that coming out soon. We'll talk about that. And again, you'll see anything. I'm, I'm going based on my timeline of what I haven't filmed or ready for review stuff on. Lots of things that I've done reviews on, you may not even see them, and they'll pop up later. We have Spectre. From uh, from Modifius Entertainment, uh, there I like Modifius Entertainment. I've covered a few of the stuff already. Spectre is actually I need to reach out to them. They actually was going were going to show me this one on TTS. I never even pulled it off my shelf to like learn the rules because we had a TTS game scheduled. That was around the last time that they had Homeworld, I believe, and so they were distracted with Homeworld. We never got that scheduled. I should reach out to them and check in on what the timeline or expectation for that is because TTS plays are helpful because they make it easier for me to just jump in and play a game. Like, I know I know how to play it already. I don't have to do the rulebook reading, uh, so I try to get those in when I can. My Island. Hopefully I'm playing this tonight. I've actually played this one already. Shrink aside, I've played a demo of this. I've played a full first scenario of it. Uh, I love My City. Looking forward to My Island. Hoping to play this one tonight. This is one we might be live streaming over on either on the main channel, Board Game Co., or over on Camp Co-op. That's going to be My Island, which I'm going to put in front of Tesseract. Which feels wrong, because the problem is, the problem is I want these games, the shelves visually pretty and storing more stuff, but I also need to remember what exists, which is tricky. Museum Picture. This one I actually have two expansions over here as well. The two expansions to this. That's part of what's held it back. I've done this from time to time, where sometimes I have a game, and some Holy Grail games who unfortunately have shut, that, shut their doors, which also, to a certain extent, puts me at a little bit less pressure of coverage, which has happened to a few games on the table, are games that I just, like, if the company closed down, I'm still going to give coverage, 
but I just feel a little worse about it. Now, again, like Museum Picture, I really enjoyed. I loved Encyclopedia, same designer, same team, and so I really enjoyed Museum Picture as well. The mistake I made, and I've done this mistake before and I will do it again, is I sat there and I said, you know what, I'll wait till I play the expansions and then I'll review them all together. Also, I'm going to continue to do that mistake because sometimes it works out well. Other times, it means that a game that I is ready to review, Museum Picture, I could review it today. I know my thoughts, I know my opinion, I've played it multiple times, but like now it's sitting in this limbo state where it's like, well, now I've waited so long, I may as well get the expansions played, but like, when is that going to happen? I like the game, I want to play the expansions, but there's always a backlog. And so Museum Picture is kind of in a weird limbo state right now, and the company closing down doesn't help rush it along. I like the game a lot, I highly recommend it, uh, I like Encyclopedia more, but I highly recommend Museum Picture, Museum Picture, not to be confused with Museum by the way, different games, same general system, but different games. Every time I turn around, I feel like the audio probably goes really low, but I'm trying to like maintain a conversation with you, which is not the easiest. Let's go ahead and move. I'm trying to stick with the standard boxes at first. We'll get to the, the other boxes. I will probably shelve on my own time, but if I can get all the standard boxes, then we open up a lot of room and a lot of, a lot of room for conversation over here. We have Horizon Zero Dawn, a game I've played three or four times, just recently read the rulebook again, uh, because I've never, I never like fully finished a full hunt sequence, but I've dove into this game multiple times to teach others to play it, I've always enjoyed it, I've had a good time with it, I have critiques, I think that this game is a lot of fun things, and I also have critiques at the same time. I actually just recently finished the rulebook with the goal of playing through it finally again, because I really want to give it a full, I want to give it a full like chance before I do anything else with it. Like I don't think it's staying in the collection, I think that it's too much, there's too much game going on, for it to stay in the collection, I think, but uh, I like it, so I want to talk about it, I want to play it more, we'll see where it goes, I just think shelf space, it's, it doesn't condense easily, I like Steamforge games a decent amount, depends on the games, like Resident Evil is my favorite, Horizon Zero Dawn I enjoyed, I'm really looking forward to Elden Ring, they have a bunch of stuff that are a lot of fun, but it's a lot, it's a lot of shelf space, where is this going to store, can this fit, this is Mystia, uh, this is another one that I said yes to a while ago, did I ask for this one, I don't believe so, I still think, I still don't know if I've asked for any of these. There are some on this table that I've asked for specifically. We'll talk more about those. But, and just to be clear, if a publisher says to me, hey, do you want these three games? And I say yes, I don't consider that asking. I consider that saying yes. Um, if a publisher says to me, which games from our... Oh, that's interesting. If a publisher says, which other games do you want from our catalog? Do I consider that asking? I don't know if I do. I don't know if I do. I think that... I, I, it's a midway point. It's an interesting midway point. And it's not necessarily... There's no firm answers here. It's just my own personal sense of obligation of... If I asked you to cover your game, like I really want to, I really, I, I asked for it. I reached out. I, I, I asked you to send me some things. So like I, I really want to cover it when that happens, and that is infrequent, especially if I'm in the fortunate position of, of the channel has grown. The channel does to a large extent. I get more games than I can cover anyway without asking. So I really try to avoid asking only in specific situations where it's like a game I really want to cover. Will I reach out and ask? And sometimes even then, sometimes I'll just buy. It depends on the price. Depends on the game interest. All that. Uh, Mystia, Mystia from uh, Tabla Games. I've heard a lot of people compare this to Blood Rage. Some people say it's better. Many people say it's worse. But enough people say it's better that I am interested in trying it out. Do I think it'll stick around? I don't know. We'll find out, I guess. I'm gonna dump that one over here. Um, that's not that's not the best place. But we'll figure it out. Okay, we got more. More square boxes to deal with. Okay, Exo World Survival. I'm just trying to go through all the squares. That sounds bad. Exo World Survival for Survival. This is from um, Starling Games. They're reprinting a lot of the, uh, not Victory Point, is it Victory Points games? Maybe Victory Point games. They're doing a lot of their, their catalog and they're reprinting, they're updating them. I just reviewed Healthy Heart Hospital. You may be able to see that on the channel or it may go up in several weeks, I don't know. But Exo World Survival, one of those, looked interesting enough. I said yes, I plan on covering it. In general, they're a company that I've given enough coverage to, I've given enough coverage to them that I'm not in a rush on that one. Like again, they sent me that one and help Healthy Heart Hospital. I turned around Healthy Heart Hospital within the first week. That one can sit there and wait a bit while I prioritize other people who have sent stuff. Then we got, how to deal with this one? Okay, we got Stockpile. Stockpile is a mistake, a mistake. Uh, this is way back. I covered this a long time ago, doing the Reckoner's Kickstarter, in fact. I was doing the Reckoner's Kickstarter, the second one maybe, I don't know, the expansion. I covered the Reckoner's for Navu Games, Navu Games, I don't know what it is, there we go, Navu Games, uh, and they've done a bunch of Kickstarters since, Stockpile, I played, my group enjoyed it, we really had a lot of fun with it, I kind of had the goal of playing with all the modules and all the various things before I reviewed it, that kind of held off on the review, review, review for a bit, and now it's in that limbo state that I've talked about, so I still plan on covering this one, but it is a limbo state where it is, it's the epic edition, it has everything at a great price point, but I still haven't covered it. I've played it like six, seven times, but I haven't reviewed it, so I need to do that. And that's where, that's where again, where I need, sometimes I need to let go 
and not feel the need to cover every single module and expansion. Okay, let's move this down over here. We managed to do a camera cut soon. We'll talk about all these things soon enough. I'm just trying to do this in box size order, like I said. Bitoku. Bitoku, another one that I, I, I learned the rules. Actually, when I first got this, I hopped on for a TTS teach that like day even. And then she never got a table to my group. I never got a chance to table this to my group, unfortunately. And by now, I'm going to have to reread the rules entirely to get there. I, I'm looking forward to this game. I'm looking forward to it. I know there have been mixed mixed opinions in it, but overall coverage has been overall coverage has been positive. I just don't think it's stayed in the public eye as much. But I want to table it. Undaunted Stalingrad. I don't know what to do with this one. Okay, this is, the, this is where my eyes are bigger than my stomach, just to be very clear. My eyes are 100% bigger than my stomach. That's not a question. It's a problem. I don't mean that sarcastically. I mean, genuinely, if you're going to, if you're going to review games, you need to be responsible. Anything you do in life, you need to be responsible with what you do. And there is a degree of irresponsibility when I say yes because I mean well, but I don't actually deliver. Uh, in the case of Undaunted Stalingrad, I am actually more fine. Like, I told the publisher, very specifically, I said, I am interested in this game. I do not know when I could properly give it the time and attention. I said, I just, I just don't know when I could do so. But, like, I like the Undaunted series, and this is supposed to be one of the best ones, in theory, and the most ambitious. But it's also so much game time. And am I going to prioritize this over more Tenaris, over more Massive Darkness? It's not as much my go-to genre. And so I was very clear about how I cannot guarantee a timeline. And he's like, no problem. We'd still love to get it in your hands. And um, now I have it in my hands. But like, I still feel bad. I still feel like there's still a sense of obligation. And I, I want to play this. I just don't know when I'm going to give it the proper time and attention. I liked the Stalingrad series very, very much. And so I'm kind of stuck with this one right now. But again, these are good problems to have. I'm not complaining. I'm, I have a sense of obligation and feel bad about things I don't cover. Nancy Narking. Man, do I feel bad, bad, bad about this one. Now this one, I have tried to table this. I've played the original Discworld. I've not played Nancy Narking. I know how to play Nancy Narking. I know how to, but I've played the original Discworld, the game this game is based off of, and really enjoyed that. The problem is, let me just check the time by the way, because I have a live stream going soon. Live stream coming soon. Anyways, the problem with this one is I've tried tabling this with my group like four or five times, and it just hasn't worked out. You really need four players to play this game. That's the thing. It's, it's one of the problems. You specifically need four. It's not that heavy. You can play it pretty decently, pretty easily. I want to table this. I want to play it. It's on my list. It's just, at this point, it's also shifted so far back in like where it is timeline-wise. This is one of the older games I have to review. One of the oldest that I, I have. And I, I don't, again, didn't specifically request it. I think this was on one of those things where they're like, hey, here's our catalog. Choose a bunch of games. This is one that I was interested in. I chose. I, I want to table it. I've tried. My group, it's my group's fault, but again, that doesn't mean it's not my fault. I said, yes, it's my obligation. How I get that obligation done, that's a different conversation. And now we're starting to realize that the places to put these games is going to start getting harder and harder because there's other shelves and things and stuff. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and put you over here. Nanti Narking, you're going to go over there against this one. Okay, uh, Tricarian. Tricarian, ooh, Mind Clash. Mind Clash is an interesting one. I I think that Mind Clash does not love me. I think. And Mind Clash, if you're watching this video, again, apologies. Um, and it could be wrong. I could be wrong. But let's let's just talk through it. So, Tricarian is one of, and the reason I don't think I th I think they don't like me not because I'm late on coverage. But they have a few games they've sent me. Tricarian, Cerebria, and um, and what's it called? What was that witch game that they had? They had a game on Kickstarter. Coven? No. Coven? No. 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 Darn it. They had a, a, a Septima? Septima. Septima sounds right. Maybe it's that one. I don't know. Either way, they had a game on Kickstarter Septima. They sent it to me for coverage, uh, and I, I liked it, but I didn't love it. I was not in love with it. I was like, it's a good game. doesn't, you know, get me going as much as I would like. And um, I don't think they loved that. Also, the video went up, I think, I can't remember exactly what happened. There was a timing discrepancy. I think they changed the date, and I didn't know they changed the date. And then I had to take out a video. It was a whole big thing. Um, I like Mind Clash as a publisher. I, I hope to be able to give them coverage on these games. I think Tricarian is going to be very much up my alley. I have Anachrony myself. I'm only showing you games that I, there's lots of games you'll see reviews for that aren't in this video. I'm showing you the ones I specifically have an obligation to cover because they're from a publisher. But yeah, uh, Tricarian over here. Let's put this, let's put this front and center over here. Let's take that shrink off. That shrink's gonna reflect poorly on camera. But anyways, yeah, so, sorry about that noise. But Tricarian, I have this one from them and I have, um, I have Cerebria from them. And Septima, I've already covered from them, and Anachrony is my own copy to cover there. Let's 
push you back, drop, there we go. Now you're you're in there. Anyways, uh, Lanzo Gazier. This one's gonna have to go on its side. I'm gonna have to move this to a different shelf. Lanzo Gazier over here. Uh, this one is from, from uh, Snow Doll Design. Very excited for this one. And um, I just haven't, it's a recent one enough that I'm not that worried about coverage yet. But yeah, I will find out. Tendaya, Tendaya over here. Never asked for this, don't know who sent it to me. That, that's kind of the end conversation. I never asked for it, and I don't know who sent it to me. Uh, this happens infrequently, but it does happen. Sometimes I'll get, get a game from a publisher, and I don't know how or why or who. And I, I have no sense of obligation. I'm just interested enough in the game. Like, I don't, even, I don't even know who. Like, the publisher, just to be clear, the reason I say I don't know who, the publisher for this game, I've never given my address, which means they must be working with somebody else who I have given my address to. There are a lot of marketing agencies that will work with you to help showcase your game, or distributors, and so someone out there who works with Tendaya has my address and sent me this game. I'll cover it at some point. I'm just, just lower down on my priority list because not one that I feel a strong need to prioritize. I think right about now I'm going to start switching camera angles, so let's go ahead and uh, cut for a second while we adjust where things are pointed. Okay, so we're going to continue from over here, and starting with Wayfarers of the South Tigers over here. This is another one that the publisher sent over, and uh, I want to play it. I have not read the rules. I did have a scheduled game night twice that fell through two nights in a row to play it. So again, this is the kind of stuff that happens. Not an excuse, just happens. Beast, Shattered Isles. By the time you watch this video, you should probably see this already. So I'm actually going to leave this a little bit out, because uh, you'll see that video already by the time you watch this. That one I've already covered in your timeline. Uh, we have Philharmonics. Just arrived, by the way. Just arrived, and that's why we're having it here. Philharmonics. This is a Kickstarter campaign that will be coming up. It's kind of been deprioritized to a large extent, so mentally I've deprioritized it as well, meaning it will be going up, just the timeline. Like, I got the game, and then I thought the Kickstarter was going to be soon. And it's not soon, so I don't know exactly when it's happening, but I'll cover it at some point. Precognition. This one I was very confused by. I thought this was like a Kickstarter coverage game that I was covering. I said yes to it, and then suddenly it showed up and it existed. And I don't think it was Kickstarter coverage. I think it's just a game that I thought was a Kickstarter game. That I, I have the rules for it, ready to read. Have not yet read it yet. We have Robo Rally. This is a Gen Con one. Uh, Gen Con, Robo Rally, and all the expansions over here. Not all the expansions, but the uh, boards over there. Uh, that is one where... It won't fit into my cubby. That's where it won't fit into my cubby. Uh, I'm interested in it. I played Robo Rally way back in the day, played it multiple times. I'm interested in the new version. Uh, it should be an easy one to cover. I just need to actually get some plays in. We have Epic Seven Arise. I've unboxed this one on the channel. Definitely interested in it, but I'm not confident in it. I looked into it. I only I, This is a, this is on me again, but I said yes to it because I was interested in the game, and I thought it was a cooperative experience. It's semi-cooperative, which made me very much less interested. I still plan on covering it, of course, because I, yes, I, I said yes to it, but kind of went down a bit of my priorities. Uh, we have these over here, which I already talked about, and I'm just trying to shelve over here. So, let's talk about some more things. These points, I'm honestly going to be reorganizing these shelves soon enough, so I might stop doing shelf work over here. So let's go ahead and just talk about games on the table, and just organize things as we can. Minecraft. Minecraft from Ravensburg over here. Definitely interested in covering this one. Uh, I like the uh, Minecraft builders and biomes, and so they have some new Minecraft games. want to play with my kids. My kids enjoy them. I think it's just good family time in that sense. We have... Emerge. Oh, another regular box games. Emerge. I uh, started reading the rules for this from Pandasaurus. Uh, this is one I cover a lot of Pandasaurus games, so I'm not as in a rush to necessarily get them immediately because I, I already do turn around a lot of their stuff very quickly, but I definitely am interested in Emerge and plan on playing that. Marrakesh. I've played this a few times. I want to play it at least one more time before I review it. That's the only holdup in this one, so it's just about getting it played. Uh, Marrakesh is a great game. Stefanfeld game. Highly recommend it. I've recommended it since I first played it. Cerebria. This is from, like I said already, from Mind Clash Games. I plan on playing at some point. Uh, probably to carry in an anachrony are probably higher on my, you know, personal interest list. But definitely want to get that tabled, or I would not have said yes to it. Uh, we have rules for Time of Empires, which we'll get to soon. We have Tapestry, Fantasy and Futures, which is great, except I don't actually have the base game. I've been playing this one a lot on TTS, uh, not TTS, on Board Game Arena. Really enjoying Tapestry. Uh, it's a game that I've actually gone, I've gotten it, gotten rid of it, gotten back, gotten rid of it. And then I started playing on Board Game Arena, and I've played it like I've played it like 15 times this past, you know, year. So I definitely want to properly cover it and the expansions again at some point. It's gone back to being a game that's in my mental rotation. We have Villainous from Ravensburger. This is one that I wasn't as interested in. They were kind of I was saying how I didn't. I was on a meeting with them, and I was talking about how uh, Villainous as a system didn't really work for me. They encouraged me to try out the Marvel one. So I have tried reading the rules a few times. Haven't got to pass the first page, which happens a lot. I carry around rule books. I travel with rule books. I frequently engage with rule books but you can't always just read everything when you want to. We have Echoes for Ravensburger. Should be a quick and easy one to table at some point. It's a little sound-based game where you're like kind of solving a puzzle and then you scan the cards and it plays an audio tune. We have Velomino from 20th Century Games. I've read the rules of this one, but I didn't even ask for Velomino. Velomino was one that they just sent over my way. 20th Century Games, I'm on their, 
I'm on their just auto send list, I think, for not necessarily everything, but a lot of the things. Mother Frankenstein Volume 2. I have Volume 3 as well, which I couldn't find right now. But I've already played Volume 1. I've reviewed it on the channel very favorably. Really like uh, Mother Frankenstein and highly recommend it, but I have not played Volume 2 yet. We have, this I'll cover soon enough, I'm trying to go through all these things as organized as I possibly can. We have The Perfect Wave. I uh, read the rules to this one. Already played it once. So far, enjoy it enough. I will see more about it as soon as I play it more. We have this I'll put over here as well. We have a lot of things from Games Workshop. We have Kelp. I've played this one as well. Really enjoyed this one. It's an asymmetric game. I need to play it a few more times because I really want to get a sensitive feel for it. But this is um, it's coming to you from Wonderbow Games. It's going to be an upcoming crowdfunding campaign. Uh, very solid game. You're playing as an asymmetric, either the octopus hiding from the shark or the shark hunting down the octopus. We have Horrified. Already read the rules to this one. Excited to dive into this one. This one has very, I mean, I, again, still didn't ask for it. Which ones did I ask for? There are things here I asked for. There's at least one thing I asked for. But either way, um, Horrified. I enjoyed Horrified, the original one. It's one of the first reviews I ever did on the channel. I'm eager to dive into American Monsters over there, so that should happen soon enough. Then we have, over here, we have Cellulose. Uh, I had Genius Games reach out and ask me what games were interesting. I gave them a few. I already reviewed a few of them. Uh, you may not have seen them yet, but I've already reviewed a few. And uh, Cellulose is on my list of one that I'm tentatively interested in. Speaking of which, we have Savannah. I reviewed their first two ecosystem games. Uh, their review has not gone up yet, but I reviewed them already. Enjoy them. Savannah's another one. I've played this one as well and enjoy it. I just need to figure out when it's going up in a video because I'm not going to do another dedicated review for this one. It'll probably go up in a roundup review with a bunch of titles. There's only so many times I can review the same system, even if they are different implementations. This is a regular problem with escape room games or exit games, unlock games, all that kind of thing. Legendary Encounters. This was got from a Gen Con. Had a meeting with um, Upper Deck. They were giving out, not giving out, they weren't giving out, they were showcasing or trying to promote Legendary Encounters. I was always interested in the other Legendary systems. Uh, Legendary Marvel for me was a game that I am fine with but did not love, and I'm curious about the Encounter system because I've heard good things about them. Then we have some more over here. Okay, so we have Pirates of Skydock. This is again from a Gale Force 9 game. I read the rules to this one. It looks fun. I read the rules, prep for it, did not get it played unfortunately, so here we are. Bayou Bash from Weird Games, same people who did Vagrant Song, said yes to this uh, about a year and a half ago. Not this past Origins, but the Origins before. I meant to play it with my kids, just didn't happen yet, unfortunately. Barrage, I feel bad for. Barrage, I'd have to check. I may have asked for this one. This is one I may have reached out and asked for. I was very excited to play it. They actually have an active, uh, they have a Kickstarter campaign coming up uh, right now as we speak, and. I want to play this one. I want to play this so badly. I, I, I just, I've read the rules for it a few times. I just have not gotten it tabled, and I want that to happen. Tennis Trail. I played the original Tennis Trail a long time ago from Martin Wallace. And then 20th Century, no, Alley Cat Games. I always confuse them. Alley Cat Games put out a new version of it. I was very excited for that. When they offered me a review copy, I said yes. I've already played it once. I just want to play it more times. So that's the problem there. We have Shazan. Shazan over here. This was a Kickstarter campaign I was very interested in. And so when they reached out and said, hey, can you review it? I said, yes, I'd love to review it. And then it kind of got put into a... There's a, there's a, there's a term which developers will know, okay? There's a term called developer hell. And that's when things in development just kind of sit there and just never get finished. Sometimes there's a concept for... If you're a board game reviewer, you'll be very familiar with this. It's not an actual term. But reviewer hell is the same concept. A game that you accept, you mean well, and then it goes into a sort of spiraling limbo of when is it going to get covered. And for me... Again, everything I get that I asked for, I will cover at some point or another. And I have turned around coverage and things in a week. I've turned around things in a day. I've turned around coverage in... I think my fastest was a day, actually. But yeah, I've turned around coverage in... In, like, eight months later. It happens. I will get coverage automatically for anything I say yes to. But the timeline, I don't guarantee. Uh, Lockup. Lockup. I've actually replayed this already. And this is one of those times where I have the expansion somewhere here. Lockup Breakout. This is one of those times where the expansion is the thing that's holding it back for me because I was like, you know what? I want to cover the expansion at the same time. And so here we are with neither covered instead. Firefly Misbehaving. Ugh. Another one that I did not say yes to uh, from Gale Force 9. I did not say yes to specifically, but I was intrigued by it. Um, this is like, sorry, I mean, like, is that, wait, no. They asked me about this. They asked me if I want to cover it. So they reached out, they asked me, but I said yes. Read the rules for it. It's a deck building game. Looks interesting. Uh, meant to play it that day. Did not get it played. And we're here like four months after I've read the rules. Uh, we have Ghost Love Candy 2. Uh, this is from 20th Century Games. I don't believe I asked for this one. This is the auto send list, but I'm happy, happy to play this one. Looks intriguing. Looks like it'll probably be too light for me. But that's okay. I don't mind. Like, again, the games like that will often go up in roundup reviews. I'll do like five reviews of smaller games that I got sent that weren't necessarily for me. Classified Information is a two player head to head game of uh, some hidden, hidden information. Uh, reached out, the, the developer, a designer reached out to me, said yes to that one. We'll cover it at some point. That just showed up. We have Tiny Epic Vikings. This is from a Gambling Games. They sent it to me along with when they sent me um, 
Darn it. What's the game? Last Kingdom. When they sent me The Last Kingdom, they sent me a tiny Epic Vikings as well, which I'm very excited for because I played this one and really enjoyed it, so I'm happy to dive into this one as soon as I can. We have Valka. By the way, camera battery is in the lowest bar, so if we get an auto cut, I'll put another battery in. We have Valka. Valka's from Terrible Games. Uh, they reached out. And they looked interesting. Looked like it had some strong solo play, some interesting decisions going on. I hope to play that one soon. This is still a newer one. I'm realizing now that the angle we're at means we're going to be looking at our, our next cut. Maybe I'll change the battery. I'll do another cut, and we'll uh, continue talking about the games shortly. Hopefully we're in the final hurdle of this all. I think we're done with camera pivots. We got everything we need. But we have Dragon Eclipse over here. This is going to be from Awaken Realms. Uh, this is the one that I'm already halfway through the rules and plan on tabling it soon. Again, by the time you watch this video, Dragon Eclipse is likely live. We have Ex Libris and the expansion, which I moved and then lost. Or is this the expansion? Nope, I moved the expansion somewhere, and it's gone. It's gone now. Forever gone. Oh, no, right underneath it, right underneath it, yeah. Here we go, Ex Libris and the Expansion. These are both from Gen Con. Uh, these are ones I was interested in. I played the original Ex Libris and enjoyed it enough that I'm intrigued to see what differences they've done to the system. They've broken up the base game into a base game and expansion, added some things, and changed the price point, all that stuff. We have Art Society. This one just arrived two days ago. I'm very excited for this one. Hope to table this one this week, but we'll see if that actually does or doesn't happen. Age of Wonders Planetfall, another one I got from Gen Con. Uh, excited enough to dive into it. I don't know if it's going to be a keeper. I haven't seen enough buzz about it for me to think it's one I'm going to keep, but I think it's one I'll enjoy playing. Applejack, another one. This one didn't really ask if this was in a general content creator bag, but it is by Uwe Rosenberg, I believe. Yep, it's by Uwe Rosenberg. That has me interested enough to give it a shot and see where it goes. We have Starfighters from Alica. Again, Gen Con game. Uh, you know, intrigued by this one. I've heard enough good things that I'm interested, and I've heard enough mixed things that I'm not as interested. Is this wire in your way? I don't think so. Never mind. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued without being sold. I think it's going to be one that I enjoy and then move on from. Founders, uh, this you'll probably have coverage of by the time you see this video. I've already played this one, but I need to play it some more. It's from the same creators as Ice, and it's kind of a... Not really a, you have your own objective, or your pattern scoring, but if you can figure out what others are doing, then your pattern scoring can be improved. So it has that strategic deduction aspect that you've seen in games like Veiled Fate or um, Clans. We have Crimes and Capers. Again, one I feel bad for, this is from a while ago. Specifically, it's supposed to be played best with four players, which has really held it off as, I think it's the kind of game I just need to suck it up and play it at a lower player count. It is a kind of mystery game, a cooperative mystery game, but it's supposed to be best at four players, which again, has held me back, but we'll see how it goes. We have Whitechapel, uh, Whitechapel Mystery. I play Les Whitechapel, review that one. Have not played Whitechapel Mystery. Uh, they sent me this one along what along with Les Whitechapel, the publisher, and I just haven't gotten around to the second one yet because it seems to be very similar to the first one. So I'm kind of less excited for it. Like I'll get to it eventually. I like Letters from Whitechapel, but just not in a rush. Trial of the Gods. This is another one from. Um, Starling Games, who take over from Victory Point Games and whatnot. Uh, this one is a two-player head-to-head card game. I started reading the rules in this one. The rules definitely held me back a bit. It's still on my list to cover. Still looking forward to it. But the rules were, like, long and very wordy and held me back a bit. Episode 2, Vengeance Roll and Fight. I've played this. I just need to play it more to be able to cover it. I've played it solo, and I demoed it live. I, I played it solo, and I demoed it, but I want to play it properly as a, not just a solo game to be able to fully experience the game before I review it. Flames and Fang, this is a recent one. I've already played this several times, and I'll be playing it several more. Uh, I don't know when you'll see coverage in this one, before or after this video, but very excited for this one. Definitely enjoyed this. This is from the One Stop Co-op Shop crew. Uh, definitely enjoyed this one. We have Zuvadis. Zuvadis did not get the table this one. I've read the rules. was hoping to play this one at a recent uh, retreat that I was at with a bunch of people, where it would have been a great to play this game, because it plays three to seven players. And I kind of want to be able to give it a shot at higher player counts. I don't just want to play it at lower player counts. I really want to try it at a variety. So... I can easily get this tabled at 3, I just want to be able to, especially for a game like this, I want to be able to table it at higher and lower player counts before reviewing it, so we'll see what happens. I don't know how fast it's going to be. This one probably shouldn't be here. First in Flight, I've already reviewed this. I might re-review this because I've heard there's been enough changes to the game. That's the tricky part. I reviewed the prototype for this when it was on Kickstarter. I've heard there were a lot of changes, and I liked it even back then. So we'll see what happens. I hope to play it, and if there are enough changes, you can expect a review. If not, you can expect... No review, because I already reviewed it. Then we have Footprints. This is from uh, Cl Chili Fox Games. Uh, this is another Gen Con game. The art is not pulling me in on this one. Like, I'm intrigued by the game. It looks light and simple. The art, though, looks very, very flat. I'm not excited for this one, unfortunately. I probably should have said no to it. I think I was more... I was like, watching the cover and looking at the Chili Fox, and that intrigued me. The, the component art is what's holding me back, but uh, I have it now, so I will be covering it. We have Time of Empires. Time of Empires over here, which I need to grab that rulebook for, because the rulebook is over here for this one. 
But Time of Vampires, this is one from a company from Pearl Games, which unfortunately closed up shop. They're under the Asmodee umbrella, and Asmodee kind of moved on from them. I got it right before they closed up shop, so that's one of those issues where I got the game. Uh, it's also real time, which makes it a little harder to table, but I got the game, and then they're kind of like, hey, we're closing, and so it's lower down on my priority list, but I still do want to cover it. We have Sanctum. This I asked for. I asked for it. We talked about how there are some games on the table that I actually asked for. Sanctum is one of them. As at Origins, I walked up to the CGE booth, I walked up to my contact there, and I said, I'd love to cover Sanctum. I've heard enough good things that I'm sorry for the shaking camera, by the way, it's not well balanced. I said, I've heard enough good things about this game that I want to give it a shot. I've read the rulebook for this twice, I have prepped to play it twice, I have not gotten a table that I feel, I feel, so this is like a two and a half year old review copy. Two and a half? Yeah, probably two and a half years old. I feel two and a quarter. But it's, it, I feel bad about this one. I, I actually actively asked for it. I have read the rulebook twice. If you watch my Gamma vlog from two years ago, you can see me reading the rulebook to Sanctum, prepping to play it. I came back from Gamma, and I just didn't table it. Devin, I know you're laughing right now. Quiet, you. Uh, speaking of Devin, we have uh, Kiri I, the duel from Lucky Duck. Just got this one recently. I've already played this one. I need to play it some more, though, because I've only played it once, and one play does not a review make. We have this one. This is another one I've asked for. This is Star Trek Away Missions from uh, Gale Force 9. This has chibi-like figures and it looks like an interesting cooperative, not cooperative game. I don't think it's cooperative. I do not believe it is cooperative. Yeah, it's head-to-head. -head. It's a head-to-head -head game, I believe, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Federation versus the Borg, core set, uh, two-player game. I do want to play this one. I was excited for this one. I heard good things, was very intrigued. I like the miniatures. I'm not a Star Trek person, but I actively reached out to Gale Force 9 and said, hey, I'd love to cover this one. I want to table this quickly and turn around coverage on this one for because, like I said, Gale Force 9 is one of those companies. They have sent me a bunch of stuff, and I have not given them enough coverage. I've given them coverage within other videos, but I like to balance those things. I, I just, yeah, feel a sense of obligation. Speaking of obligation, this one, this I feel bad about. This is probably the worst I feel about from any game I've taken on. This is the, I want to say the only time I have missed a Kickstarter coverage video. The only time, I believe. Well, the only time without reasons where I communicated to the creator that I didn't want to cover it. Uh, Soul, unfortunately, uh, they caught me at a time where I said yes because I had like, time when I said yes. And by the time I got the game and the Kickstarter was approaching, they were delayed. So part of it is on them. Things were delayed on their end. I was expecting it much earlier. Uh, so there were delays on their end. But ultimately, I got the game with still like three weeks to cover it. And I did not get a chance to cover it. Uh, things were very crazy. If I recall correctly, it was Gen Con of last year. And things were a little crazy at the time. And their delays combined with things being crazy on my end just meant I was not able to turn around a review of this one. Again, I'd have to get multiple plays in. Uh, I, honestly, if I, got, if I would have gotten one play in, I would have at least given a first impressions. But I didn't even get that in. It's... It's the only time in three and a half years of doing this where I have missed crowdfunding coverage or I've missed time-sensitive coverage without there being a reason such as, hey, I didn't love your game or, hey, your game arrived too late or, hey, there's issues. Like, there have been issues. There have been times where I'll get a game and I can't properly play it for one reason or another and I might say no after that. But this is the only time I've ever just committed something and then just not done it, which I feel bad about. Uh, very bad about it, yeah. Kohaku. Kohaku and Space Explorers, these are both in 20th Century Games. I've played Space Explorers, I need to play it more, with the expansion, which we'll get to shortly. And Kohaku, I've read the rules for, and I'm prepped to go on, but I have not yet tabled it. But I am excited for both of these. 20th Century Games tends to make two categories of games, generally. They have, like, some exceptions, like games like Raw, but most of their games are either lighter games that are a little bit too light for me, or lighter games that are not too light for me. That's the two categories. Junk Drawer, that I recently played from them, love Junk Drawer. Over here, we have a bunch of games. The order to go through this, let's figure this out. We have Combat Arena Class of Champions. This is a, a Warhammer, um, what's it called? Games Workshop has sent me a few games to cover over the, the past year plus. I've covered like two of theirs so far, maybe three of theirs. I don't know exactly. But Warhammer Quest over here, we have Class of Champions. We have Warhammer 40,000 Introductory Set. This one, I should not, I don't know. I don't think I said yes to this. I have to check on that. But that's, that's straight up Warhammer the Miniatures game. I don't know why I'd say yes to that. We have Space Marine, the board game over here, which is a board game that, again, these are all recent. All of these are still recent. And then we have Combat Arena, Lair of the Beast, which is another game in the Combat Arena system. Um, I plan on playing Combat Arena shortly. I want to turn around coverage in that one. Uh, the introductory set, I have to reach out to them and ask them what they want me to do with it, because I don't do miniatures games. And then Space Marine, the board game, I'll get around to soon enough. But uh, in general, I have so far enjoyed their games. I have not yet kept any of their games. I do have Warhammer Underworld Shadespire that was not a review copy. I still hope to table that one. I've heard good things about that one. So I, I remain optimistic that they have something that will be a fit for me. Uh, by fit, again, I play a lot of games. Not all games have to stay. I just recently actually did my stats in 2022. In 2022, around 
around a fifth of the games that I that I played that were new, review or not. It's a, it's a very often game I backed, whatever it was. But from the new games I played in 2022, around a fifth of them, uh, in some way, are coming to my collection. Either they get added to my collection and leave, they get added to my collection and are still here, or they are games that are prototypes, but I will be adding them to my collection when they arrive. So around 20%. So one of every five games I play, I hold on to, and then about half of those go away within a shorter time frame, but half of those go away within a year. So about one-tenth of the games I actually play stick around for longer than a year. That's just the number of games I play. It's a practical reality. The fact that Games Workshop hasn't done that for me yet is not a problem. I've enjoyed both the games that I've played, or all the games I've played, but uh, yeah, that's where we are with them. We have City of the Great Machine. This is one I've already played. I just need to play it more because I want to, again, this is one of those expansions killing me. I'll have to see what I want to do with the expansion because uh, it's one that I want to give a turnaround coverage for them on it. I've already played this uh, during the prototype phase, and I've already played it since, but I need to I need to play with the expansion or just give up on the expansion and just cover the game. But it's a one versus many game. You have one person playing as the great machine, moving things around. You have other players playing as agents. A very intriguing concept of a system. Uh, one versus many usually has... Yeah, it's a very very intriguing game. Very excited for this one. I'm not excited for it. I, I liked it enough that I'm intrigued to see how the final... to see how it ends up with the um, with expansion, with all the things. But... Um, yeah, I like it. I don't know if I, I don't know if it's a keeper, but I like it. Then we have over here, we have these boxes, which are just basically a few things here. We have Endogenesis. Endogenesis over here. Uh, this is um, Endogenesis, which is from uh, David Go. Uh, I have not tabled that one. I actually uh, had played Mercurial at one point. Mercurial wasn't as much for me. I still want to try Endogenesis. These are just empty boxes for games I've played, but I haven't reviewed. I want to review... Uh, I basically have been planning to do a review for, and this one, I, this, uh, I paid for this one. These were sent by uh, Endless Winter by uh, Fantasia Games. But I wanted to do a whole play this, not that, of Endless Winter versus Lost Dreams of Arnak versus um, Dune Imperium with all the expansions taken into account. So far, the last one I did was a long time ago, and it was just base game to base game. Um, the good news is we have the newest expansion, so I could at least talk about that. The bad news is I don't know when that video is going to happen, so we'll see. Then we have over here, three small box games. Uh, this is going to be a Squirrel or Die, Mouse Cheese Cucumber, and uh, Hedgehog Hop. I've played Squirrel or Die, not for me. I've played Hedgehog Hop, enjoy it, don't know if I need to keep it. And I'm still waiting to play Mysteries, uh, I'm still waiting to play Mouse Cheese Cat Cucumber, and then I'll be doing a review of all three together. But that's, again, that's a serious thing that's held me back in that sense. We have All Thingy, a game I said yesterday a while ago. Sadly, I've not got a chance to table this one. I feel bad, this has been about a year old, unfortunately, at this point. We have Full Moon, Witchstone Full Moon. Uh, this is new, uh, relatively new. I covered the game, and I enjoyed the game enough, and I wasn't sure about where the game would lie with me, and they said, hey, we have an expansion coming, you want to try that out? And so I said, sure, and I have not yet tried it out. We have Tiny Epic Pirates. Read the rules of this like four times, have not tabled it. Looking forward to tabling it soon enough. I know how to play it, I just haven't tabled it, it happens. Expansion for Endogenesis. We have Western Legend Showdown. I'll be probably doing this in a roundup review. I've played this already. I like it, don't know if I need to keep it. We have Photograph from Atago, don't know anything about this, got it from Gen Con, have not played it. We have Art Robbery from from uh, Helvetic. Art, every time I drop it in the camera shakes, it's just not very stably held. Uh, but Art Robbery and Photograph, this one's a new one, this one's an old one. Helvetic sent me a bunch of games a, like a year plus ago, I covered most of them. Art Robbery is the only one left. And Photograph from Matago Games, picked up a Gen Con. I've covered a bunch of the Matago Games from Gen Con, but not this one yet. Tricky Goblins, I was at Level Up Retreat, and I saw people playing this, and I kind of stopped and eyed it, and someone saw me stopping and eyeing it, and said, hey, it's actually our game, we'd love to give you a review copy. So... It's a trick-taking game, I assume. It's called Tricky Goblins. I assume it's a trick-taking game. I have not gotten to it yet. We have uh, Come On, Bite Me. This was kind of just handed to me from from uh, the... I was at Origins, and the winner of the tw of the World Series of Board Gaming, uh, he, he was there running the booth, and he kind of was like, hey, you know, you know, love to review this game. I don't know anything about it. I should have said no, but uh, meaning not because I'm not interested. I should have said no because I knew nothing about it. In general, if I know nothing about a game, I usually try to say no. Um, sometimes I get like a bag of things and then it's a little harder to realize what's going on. That's what we got there. Then we got over here, we got Fika. I've read the rules to this one, excited to play it. I tried tabling it a few weeks ago, did not get a chance to, but I know how to play, I'm ready to go. Unrest, just read the rules to this uh, the past few days and I'm looking forward to tabling it. It's from Pandasaurus Games. Looks like an asymmetric game of trying to, you know, uh, be the resistance or the empire. Like, it kind of, I maybe I maybe have seen this, I don't know if I saw this or if I'm just assuming this, but it feels like someone designed this like as a Star Wars game and then just took away the Star Wars IP. That's what it feels like what happened, but I don't know if I heard that or if I'm just assuming that. We have the expansion for Space Explorers, which is why I have not reviewed Space Explorers yet, because I want to do the expansion and base game together. See previous conversation about me not necessarily always making the best decisions there. And then we have 
the Harry Potter expansions, which fortunately I decided to not hold off on the review for those. I got Harry Potter and the expansions at the same time from the op. Uh, I reviewed Harry Potter with my daughter. We really enjoy playing that game. But the expansions, I decided to hold, I decided not to hold off because I knew, I knew in this case, like the Space Explorers, everything's situational depending on who you're playing with and whether you think you can get a table or not. And so Space Explorers, I think I'm still, I think I'm still fine. But Harry Potter, I knew I would not be. And that's mostly what we have for all my review games. There are a few things you have not seen, you may have questions on. So, for example, let me just cover a few quick things. I have Deliverance. Deliverance is on the shelf over here. I'd go get my camera, but I don't want to. Deliverance is on my background shelf over here. So, that's not in my regular review stuff, so I forgot to pull it out. Behind Deliverance. Darn it. What's behind Deliverance? Give me a second. I know I have something behind Deliverance. I just forgot what it is. I have Clash of Cultures from WizKids. Clash of Cultures from WizKids. I really want to table that. It's been hard. I've, I'm, I'm, I've, I've read the rules. I just need to table it. We have um, Tamashi behind me, which I assume they want to review on. But like that one, I already did an unboxing and reviewed it back in the day. So I'm not in a rush for it, but I will review it at some point. Underneath over there, we have... I can't remember the name of it. It's called... Tsukiyami, Tsukiyami New Dawn, uh, whatever it is, that whole system, which I do want to play. Um, I just, it's a whole big box under there. We also have Stars of Arcarius under there, and we have League of Dungeoneers under there. They're all big box games that are kind of out of sight, which also means they're out of mind. But they're all games that um, Stars of Arcarius I already started playing, played it a bit, but I need to play it a whole lot more. So they're all games I really need to turn around coverage on at some point. Stars of Arcarius I think is time sensitive. They have a game found campaign coming up, so I'd love to turn around review on that one. League of Engineers uh, is one I should not have said yes to. They want somebody one to cover. The game looks interesting, but it also looks overwhelming. It doesn't look like it's my type of dungeon crawler. It looks like the kind of game that I could enjoy once I get past a fairly lengthy rulebook, which is... I have to see. I have to reach out to him and see if he wants me to send it on because I don't. I don't know if I'm going to turn around coverage on that one anytime soon. And then uh, Tsukiyami, that one I will turn around coverage on at some point. It's just a big box involved game, and that's a area control game that I need to play with my group. And so that's kind of where we are on things. Maybe now I'll go grab the camera and talk a bit for a second. But that's kind of that's kind of where we are on things uh, as far as yeah. Sorry for the positioning. So, what's the takeaway of all this? There's no takeaway. I just thought it'd be interesting to go over what my review queue looks like. Um, at any given point, I'm playing a lot of games. I play, again, currently on, I'm on track to play 2,000 plays plus a year in 2024, which will be my most plays ever. Uh, but every year I try to up the number. Every, try, every year I try to play a bit more. And it's because I want to. I like the hobby I'm in. And I constantly am keeping track of my review copies. Like, you might think that these 100 review copies are a constantly escalating number. It's not. It's always around 100. For the past, I have to check my stats, but... For the past year and a half, two years, it's been in the 75 to 100 range at any given point. And a big part of that is because things come in, things come out, things come in. I constantly am turning around things. I am on top of the pile, but sometimes things slowly filter to the bottom and just don't get coverage on. And so you have these almost embarrassments of things that I want to turn around coverage on. I just haven't for a long time. And I feel that. I always mean well when I do this. And I always, I, just need, I think I just need to be clearer. I think I need to be clearer with publishers. Because the tricky part is it's not easy to just say no. You can't just say, it, games are tricky. It's not something that I, I don't have complete agency over my own schedule of playing things. Things that are playable solo, solo very rarely have an issue as far as, if you look at most of the games here, the ones that you can play by yourself are almost always um, either new or not here at all. It, it, they're so much easier. And so, well, League of the Engineers would be an example, an exception, Stars of Akira, so for the most part. But there's, I need to be clear with publishers. I need to sit there and just say, hey, would love to cover it. Just as a heads up, I always try to cover things in this time frame. I just can't guarantee it. If that's a problem for you, please don't send me the game. I think that's what I need to do more often. And again, I do it a little bit. I don't do it all the time. The games I'm excited about, like, I don't even know. Like, let's say Sanctum. Sanctum over here, right next to me, like this guy over here. I should have said, hey, I'd love to review this, but I can't guarantee your turnaround time because I just, I need to play with other players. And I, I just, I'll, I, my usual time frames are X, Y, and Z. And my usual time frames are good. Usually I turn things around within three months. Just over time, if, if I turn around, if I get 10 things, then, you know, eight of those might get turned around within three months. The next one gets turned around within the next three to six months, but the next one filters to the bottom. And those slowly just create an accumulating pile of older titles that I haven't necessarily always reviewed as quickly. For the most part, these piles are still around 50 to 70% newer stuff. But there are some older ones in here that I'm a little embarrassed about. And again, if you're one of the publishers who I got this from, I apologize. And also, um, if you want me to send anything on, I will happily do so. Um, but yeah. This is my review queue. This is my review queue. My name is Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. Hopefully I don't do another one of these videos anytime soon. And until next time, I hope you have a good one.